Hello, this is Pastor Clifton Cawthorn from Calvary Baptist Church in Clintwood, Virginia, and uh, enjoying the this beautiful spring day and uh, thinking about some things. Of course, right now we're going through the COVID-19 scare here in the America and also in the world. You know, it kind of reminded me of a a quote that uh, President Donald Trump said during his campaign. And it got me thinking about a certain scripture in the Bible. And that quote was this. We're going to win so much, you're going to be sick and tired of winning. <laughs> you remember that quote? And uh, he'd go to his rallies, you know, recently and say, Are you sick and tired of winning yet? Are you sick and tired of winning yet? You may have heard those. Well, guess what's happened? A little over the last month, everything has collapsed. The economy has collapsed. Uh, many people's health has failed them. There have been sicknesses. There have been deaths. But you know what? We've got to believe that God is sovereign in all of this. That God is in firm control. It kind of upset me when the uh, governor of New York made a comment or a quote in which he uh, said that the fact that the numbers in New York were coming down the numbers of deaths, uh, had nothing to do with God. Do you know what? Everything has to do with God. The fact that this coronavirus came on the world scene, God is in control. The fact that it seems to be abating some, once again, God is in control. You know, the worst thing that can happen to us, spiritually, is not persecution or trials. The Bible teaches that the worst thing that can happen to us is prosperity. Always winning. Always getting our way. Always getting what we want. And we see that warning specifically laid out in Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Let me show you what God had done for Israel and spiritually what God has done for us, for you and me, if we are saved. Deuteronomy 32 beginning in verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As the eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. <clears throat> Butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. What is this saying here? Well, it says in relation to Israel that God took them, in verse 10, from the waste howling wilderness to what verse 15 says, God made him ride on the high places of the earth. God gave Israel physical nourishment. In the same way, God takes us from the deserts of sin and causes us in Christ Jesus to sit in heavenly places. Spiritually, that's what God has done for Christians. Do we appreciate that? <laughs> How often do we forget what God has done for us through Christ Jesus? What about as a nation? You know, as a nation, you know, God took the United States from a, a wilderness, the 13 colonies over here, struggling. Think about the pilgrims coming over and that first winter the settlers at Jamestown's coming over, 
and those early days which were very uh, testing for those people. And what has God done for us? Made us the most prosperous nation in all the world. And we herald forth. We shout, in God we trust. We say we're one nation under God. But you know what? God warned Israel, and God warns us both nationally and personally that the most dangerous thing for us is prosperity. Watch out, God says, when I bless you with prosperity. That's when you're going to be tempted to forget me and to leave me. Let's look at verse number 15, Deuteronomy 32. But Jeshurim waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. <clears throat> Jeshurim. The word Jeshurim means upright, and it's referring here to, to, to Judah, to Israel, to God's people. Thomas Hawes says this, There is nothing more dangerous to any soul than to be fed to the full. This verse speaks of that. It says here, Jeshurim waxed fat and kicked. It's kind of like an animal. Um, I say a calf. And you fatten up that calf. And you give that cat all, calf all kinds of food. And eventually that calf takes that food for granted and starts to kick against you and starts to, to rebel against you because that food is taken for granted. Kind of like my cats here at the house. You know, sometimes they're very affectionate. And uh, my wife always says that the reason they're affectionate is because they're hungry. <laughs> and sure enough, they have an empty feed bowl. And once they've eaten their food, they just go away and don't come around. That's the way Israel was. That's the way we can be. We become fat. We become prosperous. And then what do we do? We kick against. We rebel against Almighty God. Grown thick covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. The God which made him. Spiritually, if we're in Christ, it is all of God and to his glory what he's done in our lives. As a nation, if we prosper, if we rise, it is all of God. It is only of Him, because He is the one who causes nations to rise and to fall. The God who made us. And what do we do? We turn against Him. We forsake Him and lightly esteem Him. We act as if God had nothing to do with our salvation. Hosea chapter 13, verse 6 says, They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore... Have they forgotten me? Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. It calls uh, the Lord here the rock of Israel's salvation. What is a rock? Well, uh, a rock pictures stability, protection, might, a refuge, something which is invincible, a foundation, an impenetrable shelter. We sing that song, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Another song we sing, Safe to the rock that is higher than I. Standing on the solid rock. You know, this rock is Jesus. <laughs> yes, he's the one. Let's look at Psalm 81, verses 8 through 16. <clears throat> this is a psalm of Asaph and he writes here under inspiration of God's spirit hear O my people and I will testify unto thee O Israel if thou wilt hearken unto me there shall no strange God be in thee neither shalt thou worship any strange God I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt open thy mouth wide and I will fill it but my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, 
and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, for their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. What is Lord Jehovah saying here? He's saying, I brought you out of Egypt. I've given you everything you have. And yet you've gone after these strange or these foreign gods. I would have taken care of you. I would have prospered you. And yet you turned your back on me. And so back in Deuteronomy 32, verse number 16, it says this of Israel. This is a prophecy of what they were going to do. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. They focused, they, they says here they sacrificed, they worshipped devils. The word for devil here in the Hebrew literally means destroyer. Over in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, it speaks of the destroyer. It calls him in the Hebrew, Abaddon, and in the Greek, Apollyon. In John chapter 10, verse 12, it says that the thief comes, speaking of the devil, but for the kill, to steal, and to destroy. Thankfully, Jesus says there, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. A sacrifice unto devils, to those false gods that were not responsible for their deliverance and their prosperity. You know, I think about in a political sense, <clears throat> there's a big push today, there's a big move toward socialism. A lot of people are saying we ought to be more socialistic like Europe. But these are the same people who've never known hunger. The same people who have never known true poverty and true depression. And these are the people who don't realize that it was the capitalist system based on a principle from God's word which said, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. That is the system that gave us our prosperity here in this country. And yet, why do they want to turn from it? Because they've never known poverty. They've never known what it's like to be under a tyrannical regime. That's the reason. It's the same with Israel. They're going to get into the land flowing with milk and honey, experience God's prosperity, and think, oh, it'll never go away. We're God's people. And yet they take up idols. They take up immorality. And God is a jealous God. Verse number 18, it says, Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that founded thee. Wow. The one who gave you everything you've got, you've forgotten him. It says here, The God who formed thee, the one who took you from that wilderness, took you out of Egypt, and brought you into a prosperous land. Eh, you don't think about him anymore. You don't care what his law says. You don't care that he says, Do not do this, or, or do this in the Ten Commandments. And therefore, God is a jealous God is going to have to judge Israel. And I'm afraid when we do that, he judges us personally and will also judge our nation as well. Proverb, excuse me, Psalm 9, verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. But you know this uh, prophecy here that God gives through Moses in Deuteronomy 32. It is a conditional prophecy. And what that means is we don't have to go down this road. You know, when God takes us from our sins, and whether it be individually, He sets us free through Christ, we don't have to go away from Christ. We don't have to give up that peace that passes all understanding, that joy unspeakable and full of glory. We can choose to thank God for what he's done for us and to walk in his ways and he will bless us spiritually. 
as a nation, if we're founded upon God's principles, then we can ask for and expect God's blessings. But as we stray from God, the one who made us, the one who raised us up, then what is God going to do? What did that verse say? Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Remember this during this time of coronavirus. Prosperity is a greater threat to our spirituality than persecution and trials. We think about our own nation and many of the revivals in our nation. I think about that what they call greatest generation. Born or raised in the Depression, fighting in World War II. And they weren't ashamed to say, in God we trust. They weren't ashamed to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet you have the boomer generation and you go on and on in prosperity. And prosperity is more dangerous to spirituality than persecution and trials. Remember that as we go through this in our land today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We confess where we have individually fallen short of your glory. And individually where we have sinned by either not obeying what you've told us to do or doing what you've forbidden. And Heavenly Father, as a nation, we repent. We repent of the sin of the killing of the unborn. We repent of the sin of redefining that which you have clearly defined in your word, which is marriage. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would send your spirit through this land during this time of leanness, that you would convince people of sin, of righteousness, of judgment, and you would turn their hearts toward the only way, the only truth, the only life, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. May God bless you.